You've heard the phrase new and improved. Of course, that doesn't make any sense that because if it's improved, it can't be new. And if it's new, there's no time to have it improved. So the retelling of this story isn't new, but hopefully it's improved. The story that I had initially prepared, I got information over the phone and I didn't get all the details right. And so it was suggested that maybe I should make a phone call, a FaceTime, directly to the sister in Switzerland who was involved in the story. And so right away I did that. It was 7 a.m. in Switzerland and uh, about midnight here. So I spent over an hour hearing this amazing story. There's no way I'm going to really be able to recount it as I should, but hopefully I'm going to try and I think the story will be a huge encouragement to you. Um, it's now 3.43 in the morning. I'm hoping to have it ready and get it to my brother who uploads it so that you can enjoy this story later in the day. Um, we, we just delighted in the wonderful ways of God. And as I listened, I recalled the uh, statement the Apostle Paul made regarding the church at Thessalonica. The three graces that were evidenced in that church, and you'll see as the story goes on, why these three graces are essential for us. If we're going to make an impact on our neighbors and friends and relatives who don't know the Lord, we need these graces. Now, thankfully, they come to us from the Lord as a gift. They're not something that we have to manufacture. But listen to these words as Paul writes, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's 1 Thessalonians 1, 3. These are the uh, work tools that the child of God needs if we're going to be effective on this mission to have faith in God, to believe his word, to believe his promises, to know that he's at work in the world through his spirit and that his word is true and effective and able to save because the scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And then the labor of love. We'll see this in the story, how important this is that love is manifested to the people who are searching. And finally, patience of hope. Years have gone by, decades have gone by, and still this dear sister is praying for her brothers and sisters, for her nieces and nephews and others who still have not yet found the way home to God. So let's remember these three great graces that are essential in this wonderful work. So this is the saga of a second cousin of the Honorable Farid Wagdi Tabari, this Muslim Sharia judge in Israel who discovered that the only way to share the life of God was through receiving the Lord Jesus. He has a corner on the market. If we want eternal life, we have to get it through Jesus. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, the Abbas home uh, was in the Lower Galilee in the village of Deir Hana, northeast of Nazareth. And father, mother, two sons, and eight daughters lived there. And one of these daughters, Wafa by name, had graduated high school and had been accepted at the university in Jerusalem. But she needed some time off to make some money. She had two sisters who were studying in Haifa, and so she moved in with them and started looking for a job. And she found out there was an opening at a hostel in town called Beth Shalom. Well, it was a menial job, cleaning rooms, washing windows, and so on. But when Wafa went to the home, she was immediately attracted by the she didn't know what she was attracted by, but it really was a house of peace. And uh, when she arrived back at her sister's house after her first day of work, and they asked her, how did it go? She said, fantastic. And they said, well, what did you do? 
cleaning the stairs, washing windows. Yes, she said, the place is wonderful. You know, she recalled how as a child she had gone with a Catholic school friend to a Catholic event and, and remembered hearing the name of Jesus. And her young heart was just stirred at the name. Jesus, oh, how sweet the name. By the way, a number of years later, she found out that the ministry that ran Beth Shalom usually had only Christians work there, Christians from Germany and Holland and Switzerland. And she asked the director, with a name like Abbas, why did you accept me? Well, he said, there were two workers here who had to suddenly return to Switzerland, and we needed help. And we prayed and asked the Lord to send us someone off the street. And God sent you to us, he said. Well, she worked there for a year, and she was deeply impressed with the Christians' joy, with their prayers, with their reality. But she felt the claim of Jesus being the only way to God was really quite arrogant. After a year of work, she spent three years in Jerusalem at the university, and then she went to Tel Aviv for a year. And following this, she returned to Haifa and asked if she could have her job back at Beth Shalom. And, and they accepted her and, in fact, allowed her to live in the facility there. She began to seriously read the Arabic Bible. At 24 years of age, she was full of questions. And for two years, she searched. One day, the leader of the ministry there said to her, if you want to know the truth about God, ask him. Like, directly ask him. And, and later on, seeing her troubled, he said, Wafa, can I pray for you? She didn't remember a thing that he said in his prayer, but the question that filled her heart was, what is the truth? She returned to her room, opened her Arabic Bible at random, and what verse did her eyes see first? Where, where did she light on on the page? You, you probably guessed it. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And she told me, you know, I didn't know Christians often prayed on their knees. As Muslims, we were familiar with the habit of kneeling. But she said, at that moment that I saw that verse and God answered the question of my heart, I was so overwhelmed. I fell on my knees and I prayed, Jesus, please come into my heart. And at that moment, she said, it was like a heavy stone was lifted off my shoulders. The next time she saw the ministry leader, she said to him, I now have Jesus in my heart, but please don't tell anyone. But her secret didn't last long. The other workers would regularly tell her, we're praying for you. The next time they told her, she said, you don't have to pray for me anymore. And they said, why? Because she said, your prayers have been answered. So the Sister Wafa observed, you know, no one ever argued with me or told me I was wrong. They just lived Christ before her. In fact, on one occasion, she had wrecked a car that belonged to the hostel. So she had to work extra hours. Now, she was going to school, studying during the day, and she was working there in the evening hours. And uh, when her birthday came along, they prepared a little celebration for her, and they gave her a scroll that was tied with a ribbon. And when she opened it up, it read, Your debt is paid in full. She couldn't understand at first what had happened. What did this mean? And so they explained that the staff had put together their own funds to pay her debt so she didn't have to work those extra hours anymore. And so it was, they loved her to Jesus. Now, when she wrote a letter to her family, 
with the news of her salvation, things didn't go well. Wafa was completely cut off. And this just hurt her so deeply. She didn't want to lose her family. But as she said, I couldn't go back to darkness. As a friend told her, you can't go two ways. Her decision was clear. She was going to follow Jesus. Well, there were threats that she might be killed. With a large extended family, she knew it was dangerous to even go outside. But this was a time when she spent a great deal of, of time with the Lord, and, and her trust in him grew. Her family tried all sorts of tactics to get her back. Her mother pled with her to return to Islam, and her sister was sent to plead her case. And interestingly enough, that sister, her own daughter, later trusted Christ. They sent her to see cousin Farid Tabari, the erstwhile Muslim judge, but all to no avail. Instead, Wafa told me, he and I spent good times praying together and talking about our common faith in Jesus. And she added, our God is an awesome God. Now, a good-looking young man named Jonathan had appeared on the scene while Wafu was still struggling to see the truth. He was of Dutch descent, but he lived in Switzerland, and he was actually the brother of the wife of the house leader there at Beth Shalom. And he noticed Wafu and was greatly impressed, but his sister said, wait, Wafu is not yet a believer. So Jonathan returned to Switzerland and waited and prayed. And within the year, Wafa had trusted the Lord. So Jonathan asked through his sister if he could correspond with her. No, said Wafa. She said, this will only bring more problems with my family. But Jonathan persisted, and, and three years later, they were married. None of Wafa's family attended. I mean, this was considered the worst thing for a young woman from a proud Muslim family, right? A to marry a European, to marry a Christian without the blessing of your family. Then when Wafa's first child arrived, her husband's family, they were, they were kind and helpful, but she had this longing to have her mother involved in this, the grandmother of her first little child. But when she called back to Israel, her mother answered the phone and said, uh, I'm sorry, you have a wrong number. It's a painful thing, isn't it? And, and yet, God was at work. Those heartaches are heard as prayers in heaven. Never forget that. We pray a lot more than we think. Every tear is a liquid prayer. Every groan, every heartache is heard in heaven. And God's spirit translates those into prayer requests that exactly match the will of God. Well, time passes. And an Egyptian preacher married to a German woman who lived in Germany came to visit in Switzerland and heard Wafa's story. And no doubt led by the same spirit that directed Philip to go and uh, intercept the Ethiopian eunuch the Spirit of God led this brother to go to Israel to visit with her family. When he arrived, he was received warmly by them, and over dinner, he asked Wafa's father, who's now 81 years of age, what does forgiveness mean? And then he asked, do you know how many of your grandchildren pray for you? None that he knew of. Oh, yes, said the preacher. There are three I know of in Switzerland. They pray for you every day. And so when he left, he urged them to seek reconciliation with their daughter. It wasn't long until they made a journey to Switzerland. And there they saw this beautiful Christian family, love and peace and reality not just formal prayers, not just religion, but a living relationship with the Lord. 
And the Egyptian preacher actually came and visited them while they were there and was bold to open up the Arabic Bible and read to them. So when he left, Wafa, inspired by this, asked her parents, would it be all right if I read you some of the Arabic Bible? And so every morning at breakfast, uh, with their permission, she would read them a little of the scripture. And one day, Jonathan asked his father-in-law, he said, you know, you talk about the Christian hospital in Deer Hannah, in your hometown, and the Christian friends you have. If you're so open about this, what's the problem with your daughter? And the old man confessed that he'd been wrong to treat her the way they did. And, and then he went and got an envelope and gave it to Jonathan. It was the belated wedding gift that he should have given so many years before. Seven years later, Wafa's parents um, were having their 60th wedding celebration. And this time, her family was welcome. Uh, they arrived there, and to their amazement, Jonathan was given the place of honor at his father's right hand at the table. This was quite a remarkable thing. They warmly received them. Um, one day, uh, Wafa received a phone call from her mother. They were staying in Haifa some distance away. And her mother said, would you alone, you and Jonathan, would you come and visit with us? And so they made their way over there. And on the way, Wafa was praying, Lord, please keep all the other relatives away. It's it's quite common, of course, in these extended family households just to show up unexpectedly. But um, God answered her prayer. And when they arrived, it was just the four of them. And Jonathan opened the Bible at Psalm 23 and began to read about the shepherd. And uh, as he drew to the end of the chapter, he spoke about how the Lord Jesus, the good shepherd, had opened heaven to us. And how through his death and resurrection, it was possible for us to share that everlasting life and to know it and to be ready to be welcomed into the house of the Lord forever. And then as they prayed together, both Wafa's father and mother received the Lord Jesus as their savior. Within a year, old Mr. Abbas began to fail and soon he was in the hospital, surrounded by family. Wafa and Jonathan FaceTimed from Switzerland into the hospital room, and uh, he prayed in German that the Lord would relieve him of his pain and take him home to himself. Wafa had been praying over these days that in his last moments, that the old father would be a sunbeam for Jesus in the hospital room surrounded by the family. And you know, afterwards, her brothers and sisters told her that their father's face was filled with light. And her older brother told her that, that the father had been ill at ease that afternoon. He was waiting for something. He was unwilling to let go until they called. And it was at the very moment that Jonathan said, Amen, that the old man breathed his last on earth and then breathed his first in heaven. Today, Wafa's mother, still surrounded by lots of Muslim family members, continues to pray for all her children and grandchildren that they will also find the way the way that Wafa found as she dropped to her knees when she heard Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. I trust you'll join her mother and Wafa and Jonathan and the rest of the family, that that whole extended family, one by one, will find their way home that they will discover Jesus as the only one who can give them everlasting life and receive them someday. 
into the Father's house.